1916, the bloated, castrated body of a man was dragged from the freezing waters of the Neva River in St. Petersburg. Almost beyond recognition, it was later identified as that of the most notorious monk in history. He's a superhuman force of evil at the heart of the monarchy. Hundreds of thousands of people died because of the incompetence of the government, of the ministry, and that ministry influenced by Rasputin. It's widely believed in the upper reaches of society that, that this man is really the source of all of Russia's problems. To his enemies, Grigory Rasputin was the incarnation of evil. He destroyed anyone who dared to cross his path to power. Implicated in murder, corruption, and the eventual destruction and execution of the Romanov royal family, Rasputin was instrumental in wiping out the 300-year-old dynasty and changing the history of Russia forever. In a remote village in deepest Siberia, everyone knew Grigory Efimovich. As a teenager, his shameless exploits had earned him a reputation as a thief, a drunkard, and a womanizer. His name comes from the Russian word Rasputny, which means dissolute, so he obviously spent many of his um, childhood years getting drunk and getting up to no good. By the time he was in his teenage, he was a sort of tearaway. I mean, there was a sort of gang of toughs in the village, and he was the leader. So much so that uh, they would be paid by the um, priest to stay away from Sunday worship, for example, because they were so disruptive. Unwelcome in the Orthodox Church, Rasputin began to search for an alternative path to God. Evidently, he showed tremendous interest and curiosity and a deep um, sense of spirituality which others witnessed. So he was on the way to becoming um, a, an important figure in the religious scene of Russia at the time. Rasputin was never um, ordained priest and he didn't become a monk, although on occasion he claimed to or pretended to be that. Rasputin discovered a heretical cult who believed that only after a man had sinned greatly could he truly be repentant and pleasing to God. He's really the member of a sect of which there were many in Russia. Rasputin's sect, probably the Hlisti as they are known, we translate that as the flagellants, the idea that they, they whipped themselves into a state of ecstatic frenzy where they had religious visions. And they, like many sects, believe that Christ was embodied in ordinary peasant people. The Khlisti rituals consisted of uh, meeting in secret places, forest glades perhaps, or cellars, where they would whip and dance and twirl and stamp and chant themselves into a state of ecstasy, into a frenzy. In Russian it's called radienie. They would then um, engage in group sex, in orgies. And the purpose of this was both to indulge in the sin of the flesh in order then to be purified, to repent, and to abstain once again. Despite Rasputin's involvement in the cult, he married a local girl and started a family. But he was not destined to play the doting father for long. He seems to have seen the light and um, went on a pilgrimage, so he claims, which probably means that he spent some years wandering around Russia and picking up the reputation of some sort of mystical type. From the very beginning, it was clear that Rasputin was different from other boys. He showed uh, from an early age that he had something like second sight. He had these very hypnotic, powerful eyes, which seemed to sort of be the center of his personality. Assuming the role of holy man and healer, Rasputin set about corrupting countless God-fearing peasant women. He could argue, you know, if you, you know, God, if you want to come to Christ, you want to come to God, then you have to sin first. And I can be your, the medium through which you can sin. And it's documented that many women fell for this line. 
his technique was quite straightforward and uncomplicated. He would simply tear open the girl's blouse. It's a very crude and primitive male chauvinism that he practiced. Before long, this potent and dangerous combination would lead Rasputin to the royal capital of St. Petersburg. St. Petersburg 1900 is a very vibrant cosmopolitan place. Orthodox members of the aristocracy are beginning to flirt with ideas of theosophy, with Ouija boards and seances. Rumours begin to circulate uh, in the early 1900s of this guy Rasputin who has curious healing powers. In 1903, Rasputin arrived in St. Petersburg with an appearance far from regal. He was a shaggy figure with a sable coat thrown over peasant boots and a blouse. He smelled a bit like a goat, apparently. He had long, rather greasy black hair, a thick black beard which people said was covered in last week's dinner. He parted his hair in the middle and combed it kind of over his forehead because apparently he had a bump on his forehead and he wanted to hide. Other people would say it was like a horn he was trying to hide when they want to compare him with the devil. He was pretty repulsive looking. Even his eyes held no warm religious feeling and were often described as the eyes of a maniac. <laughs> 